So on number one, I just want to expand into the formula. Okay, so I know I'm working with cosine. So my formula for cosine start off cosine, cosine. All right, so I'm going to let this first thing be alpha. And my second one, oops, alpha. And my second one be my beta. So I'm going to start off cosine, cosine. Right. Then, in my formula, be careful with this one because I'm working with a plus sign here. But in my cosine formulas, when I have a plus sign here, I have a minus sign. Sorry, plus sign here. I have a minus sign over here. So, opposite sign. And then I'm going to do sine, sine. Okay, and that's all these are asking you to do. So that right there is my answer. You do not have to go find the cosine and the sine values. You can stop right there. Okay. Um, just as a quick review, if I was working this one yesterday and did want to find the value and wanted to check my answer, what mode would my calculator need to be in? Mm -hmm. Degrees. That's right. Because they've given you the question in degrees, make sure that your calculator is in degrees. So this is the first test where we're going to have to kind of jump back and forth between degrees and radians. So I just kind of wanted to make a big deal about that again. Okay. Um, go ahead and write the degree signs on there. Yeah, just so we have the degree signs um, as opposed to the radians. Yeah. I guess technically, if it doesn't have a degree sign, it's supposed to be considered a radian. It's not really what we look at as a radian, <laughs> but technically, like on, a, on an AP test, they would take off of that. Yeah. Yeah. Good. Good question. Okay, good. Um, let's jump down to number two. Give number two a try for me. Okay, see if you can find your alpha and your beta and plug into your sine formula. Let me put those formulas back up there. If you were absent yesterday, there's the formulas that you're using. But if you're ready, check yours. This time we were plugging into our sine formula. So here's my sine formulas right here. With a minus sign in between, then I use a minus sign over here. So with your sine formulas, it's the same positive-negative sign. With your cosine formulas, notice it's the opposite positive-negative sign. So watch out for that. Watch out for those cosines. And again, you can leave your answer just like that. You don't need to find the value. Okay, any questions on that one? Okay, let's work one tangent. So let's jump down to number six. Number six, we're working with a tangent. I've got a plus sign here in the middle. So I'm going to be using my sum of tangent formula. So notice with tangent, it's got the same positive sign on the top and then the opposite negative sign down here on the bottom. So your positive and negative changes top to bottom. So watch out for that. Right, so plug that one into your formula. Okay, I'm getting afraid, but when you're ready, check yours. So again, same sign on the top, so plus on the top, opposite sign on the bottom, so a minus on the bottom. And for these, you don't have to find a common denominator. I'm okay if you leave this as we expand as 3 pi over 4 and 5 pi over 6. Now, on the ones that we're about to do, 7 through 12, we will find a common denominator and add. But for 6, we're okay just leaving it the way that it is. Okay, any questions on 1 through 6? 
Okay, so 7 through 12 get a little bit harder. We're just going to go backwards. Okay, so again, we do not need to find the value on these. We're just trying to write it as a single expression. So we're going to take what we have here and we're going to go back to this format up here and then add or subtract our angles. Okay, so I'm going to start with number 7. On number 7, my formula starts cosine, cosine. Okay, if you look at these, my only formulas that start with cosine and cosine together are these right here. Okay, if I'm working with sine, I'm starting sine, cosine. So they'll be opposites. So I know that I'm working a cosine question. So I'm going to start with cosine. Okay, then I'm going to use 25 for my alpha and 15 for my beta. Okay, and notice that they repeat, but in my formula, I only need to use them once. Okay, so you don't have to write them twice. I'm going to write my 25 and my 15. Okay, so I'm going to use the first one for alpha and the second one for beta. And now again, be careful because with cosine, when my formula is a minus here, minus here, over here, I have a plus sign. So again, with cosine, my signs are opposite from each other. So this one's going to be a plus. And so I'm going to say that here I'm finding the cosine of 40 degrees. And you can leave your answer just like that. Again, you're not trying to find the value. Just write as a single expression. Any questions on that one? Okay, let's jump down to number 12. Okay, so number 12 is a little bit different, and we've got a common denominator issue. So that's kind of what I wanted to look at here. Okay, so let's, we're working sine, cosine. All right, in my formulas, sine, cosine tells me that I'm working a sine question. Okay, so because the formula matches up here, I know that I'm working a sine question. So I'm going to be sine. I'm going to use pi over 4 for my alpha. And I'm going to use pi over 12 for my beta. Okay, so the two angles I have here are pi over 4 and pi over 12. Now this one, it does make a difference which order you write them in. So be sure that you write the first one first. The reason why it makes a difference is because with sine, I'm going to use the same negative that I have here over here. Okay, so with a sum question, it doesn't matter which order your angles are in. But with a difference question, it does. So make sure whichever one they write first, you write first. Watch out for that. Okay, okay so yesterday we talked about some common denominators. And I know that pi over 4 has a common denominator of 3 pi over 12. Okay, so if you don't have your over 12 angles written down, be sure that you do before the test. Okay, so I'm going to say that this one is 3 pi over 12 minus 1 pi over 12, which is going to give me 2 pi over 12, which will reduce down to pi over 6. And again, we don't need to find the value, just that single expression. So be sure that you do reduce your fractions. Any questions on that one? Okay, the last one of these I want to work is number 10. I want to work number 10 because it's a tangent, but also we come out with kind of a funny answer on this one. Okay, the nice part about tangent is that tangent is the only one that has tangents in the formula. Okay, so if you look at your formulas, these have sine and cosine and sine and cosine. So if you see tangent, you know it's a tangent formula. Okay, so we know this one's going to be tangent. Then this is alpha and this is beta. So my alpha is going to be 2x and my beta is going to be x. Again, there are funny little angles there because they are using a variable, but that's okay. All right, then with my tangent formula, I'm going to use the same sign on the top over here. Okay, so whatever sign is on the top is the sign that goes between your angles. Okay, so I'm going to add those together, and that's going to give me 3x. And I'm going to leave my answer just like that. Again, it's kind of a funny answer, but it's okay. You can have an answer of 3x. Okay, any questions on this? Okay, 
So I'm going to leave the rest of those for you to try in just a minute. But before I let you go, let's go ahead and flip over on the back side and again work one more of these hard tangent questions from yesterday. I'm going to work number 18 and I'm going to work on a piece of paper just because I write big. You are welcome to work right there on your worksheet. I'm going to work over here. Okay. All right. I'm working a tangent question. I'm working with 11 pi over 12. Okay. So I need to find two angles on my unit circle that will add together to give me 11 pi over 12. And I've really got two options here. I can use 8 plus 3 or I can use 9 plus 2. But remember yesterday we talked about that with tangent we want to avoid this pi over 6 at all costs. Okay, it's only with the tangent questions. With sine and cosine you're good, but with tangent try to avoid pi over 6. So I'm going to use 8 and 3 to give me my 11 that I need. So I'm going to use 8 pi over 12 and 3 pi over 12. Okay, and because we're adding it doesn't matter which order those go in. So if you have 3 pi over 12 plus 8 pi over 12, that's perfectly okay too. Okay, let me go ahead and reduce my fractions. So that's going to give me 2 pi over 3 plus pi over 4. Again, with tangent, try to avoid any over 6 angles that you might have. Try to avoid using those. Okay, so let's plug into our formula. So for my tangent formula, I'm going to find the tangent of 2 pi over 3 plus the tangent of pi over 4 over 1 minus, and again, the tangent of 2 pi over 3 times the tangent of pi over 4. Okay, so as bad as these tangent formulas are, we only have to find two values on these, which is kind of nice. Okay, so be careful with this 2 pi over 3. What do we know about tangent in the second quadrant? Is it positive or negative? negative? Negative, that's right, good. So be very careful when you go find the tangent of 2 pi over 3. It's going to be negative, and then I'm going to use the square root of 3 from pi over 3. Okay, so my first value here is going to be negative square root of 3. Then I know the tangent of pi over 4 is 1. Pi over 4, right here, I have a value of 1. Okay, then again on the bottom, what's nice is that we only have to do that, those two same values again. This time we're multiplying. Usually you'll have a 1 in there when you're working on the unit circle to multiply by. Usually. Okay, let's make that a little neater. So I'm going to keep that as negative square root of 3 plus 1 on the top, but if you change it to 1 minus the square root of 3, that's okay. You'll come out with the same answer either way. If you would prefer, on the bottom, my minus a negative is going to become a positive, and I've just got 1 plus the square root of 3. Okay, here's where we get tough. All right, so to get that square root out of the denominator, I need to use a conjugate. There's that word again for you. All right, my conjugate, I'm going to keep the 1 and the square root of 3 exactly the same, and I'm going to change the sign that's in between them. And I say it that way because you're not making both of them negative. Watch out for saying that. Okay, I'm going to keep my two pieces the same and change the sign that's in between them. Okay, then to keep things equal, I'm going to multiply by the same thing on the top. So I'm only worried about the square root in the denominator, so I need the conjugate of the denominator. Okay, I'm going to use FOIL to multiply. If you would like to distribute, you can do it that way as well. Whichever way you want to think about it is perfectly fine. So I'm going to start with my first. Okay, and my first right here, it gives me negative square root of 3. Okay, then I'm going to do my outsides. 
Be careful with your outsides on this one. I'm going to have a negative times a negative, which gives me a positive. And then I've got the square root of 3 times the square root of 3, which gives me the square root of 9, which is 3. Okay, so that was my first and my outside. Let's go to the inside. So the inside is just 1 times 1, so plus 1. And then my last is going to give me 1 times negative square root of 3, so negative square root of 3. Okay, same thing on the bottom, but remember on the bottom some things should start to cancel out. Okay, so let's start with first is 1 times 1, which is 1. Okay, then here's where it's going to cancel out. My outside is negative square root of 3. My inside is positive square root of 3. That's what's going to cancel out. I'm going to go ahead and write it down, but if you see it canceling out, you can go ahead and let it if you want to, your choice. Okay, so that was my outside and my inside. And then on this one, my last is a positive times a negative, so minus, and the square root of 3 times the square root of 3, which gives me 3. Okay, we need these on the bottom to cancel out. If they don't cancel out, something might be going funny with your conjugate. So go back and check the signs of your conjugate. You might have a positive or negative sign in the wrong place. That's a good place to check. Okay, so on the top, 4 plus 3, I'm sorry, 3 plus 1 gives me 4. And I've got negative square root of 3 and negative square root of 3, which gives me negative 2. And on the bottom, I'm just left with negative 2. Okay, so I'm going to let that negative 2 divide into them, but I need to let it divide into both pieces. So I'm going to let negative 2 divide into 4, which gives me negative 2. And negative into a negative gives me a plus, and my 2's cancel out, leaving me just with the square root of 3. Okay, let's check it on our calculator again. So which mode do I need to be in for this question? Radians, that's right, good. Whichever mode your question is in, be sure that's the mode that you're in on your calculator. So my question is in radians. I need to make sure that I'm in radians on my calculator. So go to mode and make sure that you're in radians. Okay, again, this is our first test where we're kind of switching back and forth, so watch out for that. Okay, so I'm going to start by putting in the tangent. Alpha F1 number 1 of 11 pi over 12. And then I'm going to put in negative 2 plus the square root of 3. And again, they should match up exactly. If they don't match up exactly, go back and check like where you plugged things in. Like if you plugged in um, that tangent of 2 pi over 3 and forgot to make it negative, that's a good place to check. Um, again, check those signs on your conjugate. It's a good place to check. Um, yeah. okay. okay, any questions on that one?